Nanny lifted the mistress's quilt and she got very angry when she saw the red blood on her clothes. How on earth could she get her mistress pregnant quickly? She started to search the internet for various methods to help her get pregnant and then secretly mix the herbs into her food. Then, she would take the two children out and create a date for the master couple. Is the task of giving birth to a child now the responsibility of the nanny? However, it is not. The owner has two children at home. The hostess is a full-time wife. She felt that her life was taken over by the children. She wanted to go out to work, but since the children were too young, they planned to hire a nanny. They interviewed many people in a row who were not suitable until Louise arrived. She surprised the couple very much. She was cleanly dressed and was able to easily win over their daughter. She had taken the children of two families in a row. Her husband has passed away and her daughter is 25 years old. She usually has more than enough time to come to work whenever she wants. This was simply the perfect candidate for them. At 5.05 a.m. M., the nanny starts getting up to wash and put on her makeup. She walked out of the slum, changed trains and arrived at the owner's house. The hostess gives her a tour of the house. The nanny was about to clean up the mess of clothes when she told the hostess to go to work and leave the rest to her. The hostess left the house. The nanny takes her daughter to school and then reads a story to her son. After work, the hostess ran back home worried. Upon entering the door she was stunned. The room was cleaned and both children had fallen asleep. Next, she put her mind at ease and left the children completely in the care of the nanny. The nanny is also very responsible. In addition to taking the children to and from the children, will also clean the house clean. Even underwear socks are all sorted. The neighbors are very envious of them for finding a good nanny. The lady of the house was very happy. The couple had time to themselves. The two even had time to go to parties and revel in the fact that it was like going back to a life without children. That day at dinner, the nanny saw that her daughter's yogurt was not clean, and she picked it out with her finger directly for her daughter to eat it directly. The daughter hesitated for a moment. Then she asked her daughter to eat the rest like this. Watching her daughter obeyed and did as she was told, the nanny showed a smile of satisfaction. No matter how late the couple came back, the nanny would be waiting for them at home. Looking at the sleeping nanny on the sofa, the hostess felt that she was perfect and treated her like family. In her spare time the hostess would buy her a drink. The hostess found out that she was giving her children expired yogurt. The babysitter said that just because it was expired didn't mean it couldn't be eaten. Even if it was two or three weeks past its expiration date, the hostess was adamant that she could not give the children the yogurt even if it was one day past its expiration date. The nanny agreed, not satisfied. Slowly, the hostess noticed that the nanny began to be a little strange. Sometimes, she would come to the owner's house a few hours early. This startled the early riser mistress, but the nanny managed the house so well that the mistress could not blame her. One day, the son was crying on the floor and the daughter was anxiously looking for the nanny. However, the nanny was lying under the bed and did not move to watch everything in front of her. After that she also proudly said to the little girl, You did not find me oh. That day, the child's grandmother came to play with the child, watching them play happily. The nanny seemed a little worried about something. When the daughter's birthday, the nanny invited many children to play at home. She dressed up the house beautifully to play games with the children which made the hostess admire her very much. She reflected that she should be more equipped with children. As soon as she finished work the next day, she rushed back home. When she wanted to help make the baby's supplements the nanny wouldn't let her. When she said she had ordered takeout for dinner, the nanny looked upset. Outside, the nanny would not allow the baby to eat other people's food. When she came home, the nanny cloaked herself in a game with the child scaring the child into hiding in the corner. The teacher tells the hostess that her daughter is violent should be more concerned about her daughter. The hostess didn't feel anything was wrong. At the men's celebration, they invited the nanny to stay for dinner. Watching the men discuss the large investment, the woman asks the nanny for advice on feeding the children. Suddenly, she heard someone complaining about the dirt and mess of the slums, and the nanny froze, since she lived in one. Everyone at the dinner table kept complimenting the nanny, and the man announced that he was taking the nanny on a trip. The nanny smiled happily at the beautiful scenery in front of her, a scene she had never thought of in her life. On the beach, the woman pulled the nanny to go swimming, but the nanny let go and dropped her on the ground. She said she couldn't swim. The man intends to teach her how to swim. He took her hand and slowly entered the water. Suddenly, a wave hit and the two hugged each other. At this moment, 
It was as if she had become the mistress. At the sight of the man and woman kissing, she began to feel a little uncomfortable. If she left the house, none of this belonged to her anymore. Next, she had to find a way to stay in this family. But surely she would not be needed for the children to go to school. Then there was only one way to get the host family to have another child, which would allow the host to conceive a third child. She started googling various methods that would help her get pregnant and then secretly mix these drugs into her food. She also kept brainwashing her daughter that if we have another baby brother or sister we will move to a bigger house and then you will have a separate room. She would even take the kids out to give the owner the opportunity to create a date for two. But when she returned home, the man was on the couch swiping his phone. The nanny's smile froze. After a while, she saw the hostess bloodied clothes, and she became a little angry. What was she going to do to make her stay? During a picnic, the nanny fell asleep with her child in her arms. But when she woke up she found that her daughter was gone. Instantly, she was so scared that she scrambled around with her son and eventually found her daughter on a bench. The nanny scared her daughter not to run around in the future or the consequences would be very serious. The daughter was so scared that she bit the nanny. When the nanny was playing a game with the little girl, she suddenly covered her stomach and said she wanted to go to the toilet. The little girl thought she was joking and pointed her in the direction of the toilet. Instead, she said she wanted to use the little girl's little toilet. After the little girl handed her the toilet, she peed in front of the child. And afterwards she asked the girl to help her empty it. The girl said she didn't want to play anymore and the nanny got up in anger and left. The little boy kept crying. In the evening, the daughter told her parents about the incident, but they thought she was lying and didn't believe her. That day, the mistress found the tooth marks on her son's body. She asked the nanny what was going on. The babysitter said that the daughter had bitten him. The hostess didn't believe her because she asked her daughter many times and she said she didn't know what was going on. The nanny showed the teeth marks on her own body and they looked exactly the same. The nanny said she had an agreement with her daughter and hoped that her mother would not blame her daughter or she would lose her trust in her. The hostess believed the nanny, but she found it a little hard to believe. The grandmother wanted to pick up the child for a week. The nanny was surprised to hear that. The hostess told her to consider these days as a vacation, but the salary would still be calculated. Before the hostess could finish her sentence, the nanny turned around and left. When she returned home she was as lost as a soul. She looked at the black TV screen and stared. After dawn, she came out of the dark and damp room and went out into the street to get some fresh air. After that, she went to her master's house. She lay naked on the sofa watching TV, lying in the bathtub taking a bath, even making a mess of the house, feeling like it was her own home. The grandmother told the hostess that she should care more about her children and that this nanny looked like she had a problem. But the hostess didn't care. When the host returned home, the nanny cleaned up the house again and put a special bouquet of flowers with a little card saying welcome home. The hostess thought they gave her a vacation and she came over to clean up. This nanny is really too sweet. The nanny had been cheating on her taxes and the reminder letter was sent to the owner's house, making the man very angry. The nanny, however, cried pitifully. The mistress saw that she was very sympathetic. The mistress let the nanny rest assured to go home the rest of the mafia she to deal with. When she returned from work to the slum, where the environment is dirty and messy, there are homeless people urinating and defecating. When she returned to her room, she looked at the piles of letters and the children's toys. She realized that she might have to be evicted by her master. She frantically vented in the room. After the nanny left, the mistress was so uncomfortable that she invited her back again. That day, the nanny saw a letter from the owner applying for daycare for her son. If her son went to daycare, she would really have to leave the place. In the evening, the hostess came home and on the table was a horrible skeleton. That's when the hostess reacted that it was the nanny getting back at them. The hostess panicked and called the man who was on a business trip, who could only console her to go to bed early. From then on, no matter how the little boy cried, the nanny did not even look at it. The daughter played with stickers by herself, and the nanny stared blankly at the TV. Then the nanny walked to the living room. She took out a fruit knife. After filling the bathtub with water, she called the little girl to come over for a bath. The girl heard it and scrambled under the bed. When the hostess returned home, she was completely stunned. The nanny was sitting motionless on the floor with a fruit knife in her hand. There was blood everywhere on the floor of the room's cabinets. 